Hello, everybody. Ann Price, president of the Raptor Education Foundation. So sorry that we couldn't meet in person this year for our annual presentation at the meeting of the CPW Raptor Monitors. I know you guys are working hard and did such great and probably challenging work with extra crowds at our state parks this year. We've got a very cool series of birds for you to look at this year and hopefully questions later on. Enjoy the show. All right, well, this is a short-eared owl. This is one of 20 owl species we have here in North America. We only have them here in Colorado in the fall and winter. They're pretty susceptible to the heat. So they do breed one state north up in uh, Wyoming, but we don't have any confirmed breeding records here. This owl actually has a very wide um, range around the world. They're pretty much found on every continent except Antarctica and Australia. This is also the only owl native to the Hawaiian island chain. The, the Hawaiian language name for them is called Pueo, and you are gonna see her doing that guler fluttering uh, during this segment because as I just said, they are susceptible to heat. She likes it very cold. Anyway, uh, yes, the Pueo figures very prominently in ancient Hawaiian mythology. Um, if you see a short-eared owl, it is your ancestors trying to communicate with you and um, give you instructions and send you a message from the beyond. So they are a very revered bird in Hawaiian culture. Here in Colorado in the West, you can see from her plumage, they are grassland, marsh, prairie inhabitants and ground nesters. This is a bird that nests on the ground. They are in the same genus and have a similar size to the long-eared owl. But as you can she see, she basically lacks feather tufts. Their little feather tufts, or you know, ears as some people call them, are right in the center of the head. They are about three quarters of an inch tall, and you only see them when the owl is snoozing or somewhat at rest. They take this fairly round face, and they actually compress the facial disc feathers and make it almost more like a trapezoid. And then one of the functions of feather tufts in uh, owls is to break up a round silhouette so that when they are sleeping in a tree or sitting there watching prey, the prey animal or potentially a predator to them does not see that smooth round shape, which is so obviously not you know part of the tree they're sitting in. In certain parts of the world, these guys feed on voles almost exclusively. Here in the West, they eat a variety of small mammals. They will take uh, meadowlarks, adults, as well as nestlings. They love their bugs during the right time of year. Um, they have very long wings and very low weight. She weighs about 14 to 15 ounces, depending on the time of year. But as you can see, her wingspan is quite long and that beautiful pale color really helps them blend in with prairie grasses. The short-eared owls in California and some of the West Coast marshes, like in the Sacramento area, they will leave the Sacramento Delta during the fall and actually migrate out to the coast where they will compete with peregrine falcons and merlins to catch shorebirds, which is really extraordinary because obviously people don't think of owls as very fast dynamic flyers that take birds out of the air, but these guys can hold their own. They also share the exact same ecological niche as the Northern Harrier. Um, the two have even been spotted roosting somewhat communally, pretty close together. Um, obviously, the Harriers are diurnal, and these guys are mostly nocturnal, although in the southern areas of their range, where they do breed and it gets a little warm during the day, you will catch them hunting in early morning and at dusk just to keep, take advantage of the cooler temperatures and the, the daylight. Um, this is also uh, a species 
that is native to the Caribbean, other islands in the Pacific. Short-eared owls, for whatever reason, are excellent long-distance flyers. They obviously made it to Hawaii, and a friend of mine was doing semester at sea and was still about 12 hours off the coast of Japan when he photographed one f flying by the uh, stern of the boat. He sent me the photo and, yep, right out there in the Pacific, here's a short-eared owl. They really are extraordinary. So. This bird that we have, a female, is five years old. Um, she unfortunately suffered a fate that's very common to western short-eared owls. Being ground nesting birds out in the west, they often are damaged or injured by haying equipment or swathers, and that's what happened to her. She came from the Livingston, Montana area, and uh, there were four babies in the nest, and somehow the parents managed to be killed but the babies tumbled out and survived. And the landowner did the right thing, but he just did it about a month too late. He brought all four baby owls home, fed the mice, raised them, and I'm sure when they started flying, the novelty wore off quickly. So then she was taken to the uh, Montana Raptor Conservation Center, which is a wonderful facility in Bozeman. But by that time, all she wanted to do was sit in somebody's lap and be fed mice. So, um, one of her siblings went to South Dakota, and the minute I heard about her, I said, absolutely, yes, we would love to take a nice, healthy imprint. Um, in terms of owls, these guys are extremely visual, and they are cued into flying uh, objects. She watches insects. She watches snowflakes falling. She watches birds overhead if we're doing a presentation outdoors. They really seem cued into a diurnal hunting experience more than other owls. The other hazard for western short-eared owls are barbed wire fences. So let's say nothing runs over the nest, they fledge, mom and dad are teaching them how to hunt. Well you saw how long her wings are and we got high winds out here in the west. The first two short-eared owls our foundation cared for in the 80s and 90s both sustained injuries from being tangled up in barbed wire fences. That is a huge hazard for any uh, ground nesting or uh, prairie uh, native raptor species and even songbirds here in the American West.